right, it's uh, morning of November 2nd. This is the conclusion of a story that has been three years in the making. About a buck named Kicker. There is an ending at this point. We don't know if it's a happy ending or a very disappointing ending. We've got uh, overcast skies, rain, so it's staying you know a little darker than we want it to be right now, but. Last night, the quest came to an end, and uh, we're going to try our very best to make that the ending we want it to be this morning. So I guess the way to do this is introduce you to the buck that's had a major difference in the way I think about things and in the way that I, I hunt and the lessons that I've learned over the past three years, this is Kicker's story. We first saw uh, this buck, he wasn't called Kicker then, he was just called the Wide Eight Point as a three-year-old, and he was pretty easy to see. A lot of trail camera photos, and he was actually hanging out with a different deer that we were trying to hunt that had a messed up side. And it had to be around the 5th or 6th of November. We had him come in with some does and fawns. And I hadn't decided if I wanted to take him or not. And it turns out we didn't get the shot. But he was a good buck. And I had no idea that this was the beginning of a quest to chase a six and a half year old deer in southern Michigan on a place that's heavily hunted, tons of hunting pressure around it, where I've never seen a buck that I can confirm is over four years of age. The following year, Kicker was a four and a half year old buck. He developed the kickers that earned his name. Got uh, trail camera photos of him off and on. He was starting to become a lot more of a, a just a non-social animal. He wasn't with other deer. He wasn't running does. When we did see him, he was moving with the doe, you know, during the rut. November 11th, I believe it was, he came out of a bedding area midday like they always do around here totally off guard and I missed him at about 38 yards did not see that deer again that year
Too bad. Too far back. Keep an eye on it. Way back. First, that buck is called Kicker. He's a six-year-old buck that we have hunted for three years. And I haven't talked a whole lot about on any of our episodes or shared much with, for obvious reasons, because he's a six-year-old buck living in Michigan. Caught us completely off guard in an area we're not expecting him to come from. I had earlier ranged a spot out there 30 yards. I took a range when he was coming um, where I thought he was gonna cross at about 40. And he was a little beyond that, probably 45. And it's, I mean, I have a lane, it's not a problem, but I hit the stand when I'm drawing because I got a big tree right here be beside me. And Yes, I can make all excuses I want. I think what I did is I probably compensated for having to shoot between this tree and the stand, and I probably can at my bow. And I hit him perfect up and down, way back. Crap shot. The deer went maybe 100 yards, probably not even 100 yards. Had his head out, mouth open, and laid down. It's a dead deer. It needs to be a recoverable deer. So we're watching until dark. I'm gonna make a huge circle out of here, not coming back till tomorrow. And I guess these things happen. <laughs> but it's what we do now that matters, and we need to we need to finish the job. See him? You, I don't do the right things all the time. But I listen and I learn and I made a bad shot and we got out and he's dead right where we left him. I don't hunt special places. I hunt a lot of public land. This is 120 acres. Right now, this is not a word of lie. We're not going to pan it because I don't want you to see exactly where I am. I can see right now one, two, three gun shacks. I know 100 yards that way is another one. And 120 yards that way, there's a guy bow hunting right now, I guarantee it. This should not be possible according to everything you read. Let's go walk and show you what's possible. kicker. I'll be 100% honest, this is a lot more bittersweet than I thought. I'm extremely happy to, I've had the chance to hunt him first and foremost, but to put things together and we'll talk about how we did this. You know, that's going to be the point of this episode. The, the story finishes here. The story is not about this. It was about how we were able to do this. Um, but bittersweet because I won't get to chase this guy anymore. This, the, he, he gave me three years of excitement 
and frustration and lessons. I've learned more from this deer in three years than I have learned in an entire career of hunting. And I, I, I'm not one of those guys that jump up and down and yeehaw and yippee. And I realize that I made a crappy shot. And I'm sure people want to post their comments about practicing more and all that. And, and you're right. I need to practice more. We all need to practice more. But it wasn't lack of preparation or commitment or anything like that that made it happen. Deer hunting made it happen. Those things happen in deer hunting and that's the way it is. This, I don't even know what to say. To me this buck means more than, more than you can know.